Hey traders, in today's video, we're going to be covering a commonly requested subject, which is how to detect RSI divergence in PineScript. Now, this is a complex subject to cover in code because RSI divergence and other forms of divergence are quite a subjective pattern. You'll see what I mean as we go through the lesson and I explain the code. But before we begin, I should define what RSI divergence is and how we're defining it in today's lesson. So RSI divergence is when price makes a low and then a lower low, but the RSI oscillator makes a higher low. This is what is referred to as bullish RSI divergence. Now, whenever this occurs, we generally see price move in the opposite direction. Obviously the catch is we don't know that this has happened until after the fact, because there's nothing stopping price action from uh, when we're here from continuing lower and the RSI making a lower low. So that's what I mean by this is a subjective pattern that is difficult to detect in code because we often don't really know this is RSI divergence until after the fact. But as you can see here, on the handful of examples on this chart, it can be a pretty effective signal for counter trend or mean reversion opportunities. Let's jump into the source code for this script. As always, the source code will be below. Check the video description and the pinned comment below for a link to this source code if you wanna just go and copy it right now and start playing around with it. But for those of you who wanna understand the code, I'll break it down in sections. So let me cut out most of this code and I'll paste it in block by block and explain what each line of code is doing. So first of all, we're just creating a regular indicator here. This is not a strategy script, although we could convert this into a strategy in the future once we've built out the tool. But as always, the first thing I do here is get some user inputs. So if I open up the settings menu here, we have the max bar distance, which is going to be the maximum number of bars we can consider a valid RSI divergence signal to have occurred. So for example, here we had the RSI go overbought and then price made a low, and then we made a higher high, but the RSI printed a lower high. However, my script will not detect this as RSI divergence because there are too many bars in between. So there comes a point when enough time has passed between the initial um, RSI high that the divergence isn't really divergence because price has moved on. We're in a new phase of price action. And so again, that's a matter of subjectivity. It's a matter of preference. How many bars do you consider the maximum distance in which you no longer are looking for RSI divergence? So that's what this setting is for. Uh, next, we have this stop detecting after first signal. I'll explain what this does uh, later on when we've pasted in most of the code for the tool. And then we just have our RSI settings here. Default 14 period RSI default overbought and oversold levels of 70 and 30. So of course, if we're detecting RSI divergence, we need the RSI value. You could replace this line of code with any oscillator indicator. First of all, this will work on any time frame and any market, but it will also work on any oscillator type, such as the MACD, stochastics, and even something like on balance volume. But for today, to keep things simple, we're just gonna work with the RSI. So to begin with, let's detect bullish RSI divergence. To do this, we are going to need a bunch of variables to work with. So I'll explain what all of these variables are as we work through our divergence detection code. So there's a lot of code here, but don't worry, I'll break it down line by line. So this is the RSI. This is my childish version of a um, RSI. And what we're looking for is the RSI value to go below 30. Once this occurs and we have an oversold condition, then we want to track the lowest low that price action makes while this condition is met. So here, as soon as the RSI gets below 30, we want to keep tracking each candle's low and save the lowest low over that period while this condition is met. And that's what this code here does. So first we're checking is the RSI value, the indicator value below our oversold threshold, which is 30, or is the previous bar's RSI value below 30. If the current bar or the previous bar has an RSI value below 30, then this code gets run. And this code is checking if our initial low price is not NA, then that means we are tracking a new occurrence of bullish divergence and we need to reset the existing initial low price. So again, if the RSI has gone oversold, we want to reset our initial low price and then begin tracking the most recent low while the RSI was oversold. So first we detect the RSI being oversold, then we reset our tracked initial low price. And then we check here, if check first low is NA, or the current bar's low is lower than check first low, then we set check first low to the current bar's low price. We check the initial low index, the bar index, 
to the current bar index. And then we set the initial low RSI value to swing low RSI. Swing low RSI is this float value, which is getting the lowest RSI value over the past five bars. So visually what is happening here is when the RSI is oversold, our script is tracking the lowest bar low while this condition is met. And so the lowest bar would be this bar here. And when this bar's low is saved as our initial low in terms of price action, we also check the past five bars and save the lowest RSI value over that little look back period. And then in the future, what we're going to do is detect the next low and check if the RSI is higher than that initial RSI low value and that this price low is lower than our initial saved low. So that'll be the next block of code. So now that we're tracking and saving the initial low whenever the RSI is oversold, let me paste this code over. So the next step is to check for a second low that is lower than the first low and with a higher RSI value and also within our maximum distance, which is 50 bars by default. So what this code is doing is first we're detecting an initial low. So the relevant information is saved here. So we've got the lowest price value and the lowest RSI value. We save that information. And then if I throw on a horizontal ray here, the next thing that our script is looking for is a bar where the previous bar's low is lower than the current bar's low. So we have like a uh, one, two, three fractal move. So this low is lower than the next bar's low and the RSI value is higher than our initial lowest RSI value. That's what this code here does. So it checks is the previous bar's low lower than our initial saved low price, which is this bar here. And is the current bar's low higher than the previous bar's low? If that condition is met, then we also check is our most recent swing low RSI value, so the lowest RSI value over the past five bars, higher than our initial lowest RSI value, and is the current bar index minus the initial low index less than or equal to our maximum bar distance? If this condition is met, then we do have bullish RSI divergence occurring, so we set this to true. And in fact, this um, Boolean input here in the settings menu, stop detecting after first signal was a debug parameter that I was using to develop the script. So I can actually get rid of that now. I'm just realizing. So we can get rid of this input altogether. And so now if I save my code, what's happening here is when we detect our second low that is lower than the first, so the second low in price action needs to be lower than the first low and the RSI value needs to be higher than the first RSI value. If that condition is met and it occurs within the maximum bar distance that we've set in the settings menu, then bullish divergence is set to true. We create a new line that connects our initial price low with our divergence low. And then after the line is drawn, we set initial low price to NA and that will stop the script from detecting any new um, occurrences of RSI divergence whenever a swing low is detected a one, two, three fractal move is detected while the RSI value is higher than the initial low value. So this tool will only detect the very first occurrence of RSI divergence, just as you would if you were using it to trade live price action. So what this means is when you're back testing historically, there may be occurrences when the script detects, um, there was an example here. Here we have detected RSI divergence, but the divergence wasn't really confirmed until this low here. But when you're trading in real time, you don't know that this isn't a true occurrence of RSI divergence. So normally a trader that would use RSI divergence in their trading um, toolbox would wait for a price action pattern to confirm the RSI divergence. Um, so maybe you wait for a higher close. For example, to keep this script simple, I didn't include a candlestick pattern confirmation in this RSI divergence detection. Just to keep the script as simple as possible, we didn't add that um, extra step into the script. Perhaps I'll do that in a future lesson. But what this means is the script will sometimes detect RSI divergence on historical price action that was not confirmed. So this was not really confirmed until we got our price action moving higher. And so keep that in mind, the script can definitely be improved. It's just a foundation to begin um, working with. If I were to add in all the bells and whistles that I would typically include in an RSI divergence script, the script would be probably hundreds of lines long. So for today's lesson, I just wanted to create a foundation for you guys to go out and play with and expand on. Uh, but anyway, so far so good. The last thing to do is to draw a little triangle 
This triangle up, um, green triangle, will be drawn when the RSI divergence is confirmed. So this bar right here is the bar in which this condition was confirmed. If you had alerts set, this bar is when the alert would fire. And if I were to trade this pattern, I would go long on the open of the next bar with my stop loss below the low. And my target would typically be pretty close considering this is a mean reversion type trade. It's counter trend. So I'm not really expecting price to rocket into new highs. I'm just expecting a short term bounce. Uh, but anyway, this isn't a trading lesson. Um, this is not financial advice. Always do your own research, do your own back testing, make your own decisions, seek your own professional advice. This is just for educational purposes. And we are pretty much done. The script is detecting bullish RSI divergence. So this code is relatively simple. It could definitely be expanded upon. As I said, we could add price action confirmation using candlestick patterns. And one of the issues with this script is that if price action, let me see if I can find an example. Here's an example. If price action goes oversold on the RSI and then price makes a lower low that also goes oversold on the RSI, this will not be detected as RSI divergence because whenever the RSI goes below 30, all of our divergence tracking variables um, get reset. Our initial low price gets reset and we begin looking for a new low. So once the RSI goes oversold, now we're looking for another low that does not go oversold. So that is one minor limitation of the script. It will only detect major divergence where the RSI goes oversold, price makes a lower low and the RSI makes a significant higher low. Now in this particular case, you can see the lower low is very marginal. So another thing you could add to the script is maybe a minimum pip or percentage distance that this second low must be from the previous low. But again, I wanted to keep this script as simple as possible. So I haven't added any of those features in. Perhaps if you guys are interested, we could explore this subject in further detail and I could expand on this script and add some of these features I'm talking about. But for now, that will do it for today's lesson. Let's finish it up by including our bearish divergence code. It's identical to our bullish divergence code, except everything is obviously detecting things in the opposite direction. For bearish divergence, we're gonna be detecting when the RSI goes overbought and then price action makes a higher high, but the RSI makes a lower low. So if I get rid of this debug check, um, this code is now identical to the bullish divergence, but opposite direction. And now we're detecting the RSI going overbought, and then price action making a higher high while the RSI makes a lower low. Again, we could add more filters in here. For example, we could add a minimum distance that price must move down before a new high is considered to be a divergence high, but that adds more and more complexity to the script that I don't wanna go into. Otherwise this lesson will be like two hours long. So we'll wrap it up here. Let's just finally copy in our alerts code. So this will trigger alerts when we have bearish or bullish divergence. The reason why we have four alert calls here is because these two are for selecting our script and selecting the any alert function call. This option will trigger these two alerts, so bullish and bearish divergence. However, if we only want to detect bullish divergence or bearish divergence, we can select these two alert conditions. The biggest advantage of the any alert function call is that you can input dynamic information into the alert string. So here we are um, including the distance between the RSI into the alert message, whereas alert conditions cannot do this. They need to have a static string that never changes. Just thought I'd point that out at the end of the script, a little bit of a bonus tip for those of you who are unaware that the alert function behaves slightly differently to the alert condition. Alert condition is only triggered when this condition is true, whereas alert is only triggered within this if statement. So for me, if I were to use a tool like this, um, the challenge is that I can't fully automate my price action detection without significant complexity in the code. But I think the main advantage of this sort of price action pattern is using your discretion as a trader to determine whether or not the trading opportunity is a valid trading opportunity and a high quality trading opportunity. So for me, the way I would use this tool would be to set alerts. And whenever RSI divergence is detected by the script, I could load up the chart, analyze the price action, perhaps wait for price action confirmation with some sort of candlestick pattern that confirms that price is likely to reverse. And I would go from there. This is not a trading technique that I would recommend automating. It's not something I'm interested in trying to automate because of the fact that there is so much subjectivity in determining what a valid divergence trading opportunity is. 
And of course, there are so many different forms of divergence. There's hidden divergence where the RSI makes a low and then it makes a lower low, uh, but price action makes a higher high. That form of divergence is quite rare, but it does happen and it can be an interesting trading opportunity. But for today's lesson, I just wanted to keep things as simple as possible. So we're just detecting vanilla divergence. Thank you for watching as always. I hope you found this lesson interesting. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, check out our courses at pinescriptmastery.com and I'll speak with you in the next lesson. Good luck with your trading and your coding. Take care.